I'm going to tell you about the facts of the case. Andrew's going to tell you about the Supreme Court decision. And Jai Wei is going to deal with some unresolved issues. The claimant was Mrs. Tatler. At the suggestion of her cousin and her husband, Dr. and Mrs. Christian, Mrs. Tacker transferred some properties to an SPV called Gracefield Developments. She claimed she'd done so in the belief that the properties would remain hers, albeit the Christians would do them up and then rent them out. When she discovered that one of the properties was on the market, Mrs. Tacker issued proceedings for undue inference. The Christians' defence was that the SPV was a joint venture vehicle and it had been agreed that Mrs. Tackar would receive the first £300,000 out of any proceeds of sale, and that the net profits thereafter would be shared on a 50-50 basis. In support of their defence, they relied on a profit sale agreement signed by Mrs. Tackar, albeit Mrs. Tackar had no recollection of doing so. Importantly, at the trial, Mrs. Tackar was unable to say that her signature was a forgery. The judge relied on this and found that the profit sale agreement accurately recorded an earlier oral agreement between the parties. After the judgment had been delivered in July 2010, Mrs. Tacker obtained an expert report. That expert expressed the conclusive view that her signature was, after all, a forgery. Armed with this, she issued new proceedings seeking to set aside the original judgment on the ground that it had been obtained by fraud. The Christians retaliated by issuing a strikeout application. The key issue in the strikeout application was whether or not someone who is seeking to set aside a judgment on the grounds of being obtained by fraud has to demonstrate that he or she couldn't have discovered that fraud by the exercise of reasonable diligence. The issue of whether there is a reasonable diligence requirement to the test for setting aside a judgment obtained by fraud went all the way to the Supreme Court. Because of the importance of the issue, the Supreme Court panel comprised seven justices. Ultimately, they unanimously concluded that there is no reasonable diligence requirement to the test. In reaching their decision, the court had to balance two important principles. On the one hand, the principle that fraud unravels all, and on the other, the principle of finality of litigation. The first of those principles prevailed. In reaching their view, the court considered that the justification for setting aside a judgment obtained by fraud was overwhelming, even where a litigant had failed to exercise reasonable diligence. The law can't allow a fraudster to profit from their wrongdoing simply by reason of the victim's carelessness. Furthermore, where a judgment has been obtained by fraud, a fraud has been practiced not only on the opposing litigant, but also upon the court and the rule of law. The exact reasoning of the Supreme Court and the qualifications to that reasoning are at times nuanced, and for anyone practicing this area, it's important to consider the judgment carefully. The Takar decision is of general importance because the issue that it addresses can potentially arise in any case in which some form of evidence has been presented to the court. What we think commercial litigators should bear in mind is that while the Supreme Court has relaxed the test for setting aside judgments obtained by fraud, it's still not an easy thing to do. In large part, this is because, as Andrew has already mentioned, the Supreme Court's decision comes with several significant qualifications. For instance, if a litigant consciously decides before trial not to investigate the possibility of fraud, he can't then turn around and try to rely on that same fraud to set aside the judgment, because doing so might very well be an abusive process. How wide exactly the scope of this doctrine of abusive process is as it applies to setting aside judgments obtained by fraud remains an open question, and it's a question that litigators should bear in mind any time they're confronted by a judgment tainted by fraud.